imagine that my hand is the dog's head when I'm putting the fur saver on the dog, okay? If my hand is the dog's head, I want to make sure that the live and dead rings are on the right side of the dog's head, but also so that the dead ring, if you can see that, loops underneath the dog's head, okay? The reason for that is if I need to apply tension to the fur saver for any reason, and I slack tension, the fur saver will self-release. Okay, you see that? So I apply tension, I slack tension, the fur saver will self-release. And that's because the dead ring, again, the dead ring is looping underneath of the dog's head, all right? If I have it on upside down, and I put the fur saver so that the dead ring goes over the dog's head, if I apply tension to the live ring with the leash, it will not self-release. So I apply tension, there's no self-release. It has tightened down and it will not slack out until you manually grab that dead ring and slack it out. All right, so that is why we want to ensure that every time we put it on the dog, we put that dead ring so that it loops underneath the dog's head. I have my leash attached to the live ring. I apply tension and it self-releases. So as I put the collar on the dog's head, I want to make sure the live and dead rings are on the dog's right side of their head. Slip it all the way down onto the neck. And then once it's on the neck, I'll pull the live ring uh, a little snug up against the dog's neck. And here I'm checking for fitment. So if I see one, two, three, four links coming through the dead ring, I know I've got a good fit. Okay, three to four rings, rings, uh, links is a good fit. All right, if I slack out the live ring, and I put my uh, hands on both sides of the dog's neck inside the collar, I should be able to comfortably get four fingers on each side and tell me, you know, that I have enough uh, slack there on the dog's neck. Now, some dogs have bigger heads than necks, so we'll fit the collar to fit over the head and onto the neck, okay? 